and welcome to today's lesson on exponential and scientific notation. We're going to be working in that lesson uh, that in Study Island that is called exponential and scientific notation, and we're also going to be working with topics under the standard 2.1 in 8th grade for Oklahoma. So I'm glad that you could join us today, and just remember, please be taking notes, and if I go too fast, just pause and rewind so you can stay caught up. And then you can also pause at the beginning of the question, work that problem out, and then watch the video, and that way you can get a gauge on what you can do really well and what you still need practice on. And so I'm glad that you are joining us today, and make sure you're taking those notes because there's just a few tricks to these problems that if you can study and understand will really help you out. So let's go ahead and look at those notes. So here's the generic form of scientific notation. You have this number in front of that you're going to take times 10 raised to a number. So this number here has to be the absolute value of it. So the positive version of this number can be 1, but it has to be less than 10, and it can be anything in between. So it's a number greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. And then this is always a 10, and then this is always going to be an integer, meaning negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Um, it can't be a decimal, it can't be a fraction. And so when you are looking at converting between standard form and scientific notation, here are some helpful tips. Anytime you have a positive exponent here, that means in standard form, that's going to be a bigger number. Whereas when it's a negative number, it's going to be under 1. It's going to be a small decimal. So to actually convert, you're going to go from this, if you're starting with standard form, you're going to count how many times you have to move the decimal. So this decimal started at the end here. And it moved nine times till you got to the point where it created a number equal to or greater than one, but less than 10. So we had to stop at 3.2. And since we moved it nine times, that became my exponent on the 10. And then I just kept 3.25 and dropped all those zeros because they aren't necessary. And so when I moved, when I had to move it to the left, it made it a positive exponent. Because remember, this started out as a really big number. So it's going to be positive, whereas this one, it's starting out as a really small number. So I know my exponent's going to be negative. And so the, ex the decimal started here. I'm going to have to move it to after the 4 to get it to be greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. And so when I count, I had to move it 7 units to the right. And so that means it's going to be a negative 7 here. And then the 4 is what goes out front. So let's look at some more examples. So here, I'm going to go ahead and copy down this number so it's bigger and easier to see. And they want us to take this standard form and write it in scientific notation. So the first thing I'm going to do is see how many places I have to move my decimal in order to create a number that is greater than 1 but less than 10. And so I had to move it 1, 2, 3 units to the right. So that means my exponent is going to be a negative 3 because I moved it to the right and because it started out as a small number. Now I can drop all those zeros and I've moved the decimal so it's between the ones and so the number out front is 1.1 which makes my final answer B. This answer here looks a little bit different because it already looks like it's in scientific notation. However, it is, this number in the front isn't greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So I need to continue to move that decimal. So I just rewrote the number to make it easier to see where I have to move the decimal. And it needs to go between the 2 and the 4, because 2.41 is greater than 1, but less than 10. So now I have to think about how that's going to affect my exponent. So I moved it one, two, three times, and this was a small number, so that means if it would have been a negative exponent, but instead of writing negative three here, I'm going to subtract three from my 
exponent that was already there, and 21 minus 3 is 18, so that means my final answer here is going to be B. So now I'm starting out with a really big number, and they want me to write it in scientific notation. So remember, when you don't have a decimal, it's always invisible at the end there, and I'm going to see how many places I would have to move it in order for me to create a number that is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So 5.7365 fits that. And so that means I'm going to move my decimal to create this new number that is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. And I had to move it 7 times. So that means my exponent here is going to be 7, and it's a positive 7 because I started with a really big number in standard form. So that's going to make my final answer D. So now they're giving us a, a number in scientific notation and asking us to write it in standard form. So here I have an exponent that is a positive 4. So that means I'm going to have to move my decimal four times in order to create a bigger number. Since it's positive, that means I'm going to need to create a bigger number. And so to create a bigger number, I'm going to move it to the right. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, and then four means I'm going to have to fill in a zero there. So that means my final answer is going to be 12,890 which is letter C. Now I'm given a number in scientific notation and asked to write it in standard form. So I'm going to look at the exponent. The exponent is a negative number and it's a negative one. So that means I'm going to have to move my decimal place one spot and make it a smaller number, move it in such a way that it creates a smaller number since it's a negative exponent here. So to create a smaller number, I'm going to move it once to the left so that means my new number here is going to be 0.7746, which is choice A as my final answer. The next choice or next questions I'm looking at are working with exponential notation. And so when we use exponential notation, it's another way of talking about place values. So you should be familiar from elementary school, the different place values that we have in front of and behind the decimal. But instead of writing tenths, hundredths, or once tenths, we're going to use powers of 10. So remember, if you have 10 and you take that to the zero power, that's the same as one. If you have a 10 and you take that to the first power, that's the same as 10. If you have a 10 and you take that to the second power, that's the same as 100. If you have a 10 and you take that and you cube it, that's the same as a thousand. So when we go to use exponential functions, we're going to be using a 10 to the 0 to represent 1's place. We're going to be using a 10 to the 1 to represent 10's place, a 10 to the 2nd to represent 100's, and so on. And then on to the left of the fraction, or to the right of the fraction, after the fraction, we're going to use a 10 to the negative to represent tenths, a 10 to the negative 2 to represent hundredths, a 10 to the negative 3 to represent thousandths, a 10 to the negative 4 to represent ten thousandths, and so on. And so I would write this down so you have it to reference to as, we, as you're learning how to do these problems. So here I have... I went ahead and saw that my exponent, the highest one here on the tens in this exponential is a seven. So that means that I'm going to, I'm going to start with seven and write down to zero and then put little blanks on top of them to fill in. You can't forget about the zero representing the ones column or it's going to mess up your whole answer. So because the five is beside the 10 to the seventh, I'm going to write a five above it. Because the 9 is next to the 10 to the 6, I'll write a 9 above my 6. And then I'm going to have a 9 above my 5, a 4 above my 4, and an 8 above my 3. And then I don't have a 10 to the 2nd, a 10 to the 1, or a 10 to the 0. So I just fill in zeros there. And so that means my final answer here is going to be 59,948,000, which makes my final answer D. 
So in this question, I'm asked to go backwards. So I'm going to take my negative 155 and 300 or 35 hundredths. And I'm going to put my blanks underneath those and just fill in what my exponents would be underneath. So one column is a zero, tens is a one, hundreds is just two. And then it's negative one for my tenths and negative two for my hundredths. And so that means that where I have an exponent of 2, I'm going to have to have a negative 1 because it was negative up here. So, And then where I have an exponent of positive 1, I'm going to have to have a negative 5 since my original number was negative. Where I have an exponent of 0, I'm going to have to have a negative 5. Where I have an exponent of negative 3, I'm going to have to have a 3. And where I have an exponent of negative 2, I'm going to have to have a negative 2. So that's going to make my final answer here at D. Same type of problem here. I'm going to rewrite my problem and then I'm going to go ahead and put lines underneath of them to show each place value. And then I'm going to write the exponent that I expect to see on the 10 underneath. So remember, ones you start with zero and then you just go up from there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means beside my 10 to the seventh, I expect to have a three. Beside the 10 to the 6, I expect to have a 6. Beside the 10 to the 5, I expect to have a 1. Beside the 10 to the 4, I expect to have an 8. And beside my 10 to the 3, I expect to have an 8. And then the rest of these are 0, so they just get left off. So that's going to make my final answer here D again. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.